Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. We have a very special episode of our nameless video series that we here we have here today. I have two very special guests that I work with at Where Oh Where, our Chief Technology Officer Eric McKenzie and our Director of Optimizely, excuse me, Director of Engineering for Optimizely, Matt Damon. How are you guys doing today? Great, great. Thanks good. for having us. Thanks, Ajar. Absolutely. I uh, wanted to start asking a quick question like I always ask all my guests. How did you guys get into marketing? Well, I started uh, years ago kind of on a technology path, um, and I really wanted to work with um, marketing platforms, web technologies, and that drew me into the agency life. Um, so I started, um, you know, really as a technologist working with um, .NET platforms and, and things like that and made the transition more into the, um, you know, into the marketing world as a, as a technologist um, and kind of started there, built my career that way. Awesome. What about you, Eric? Oh, mine started a while ago, so 24, 25 years ago, so early thousands. Um, okay. You know, I, I started off with uh, just having, um, you know, a, a notion to, to get into development, had a, a few close friends that were in um, uh, the car industry, you know, dealership industry, and, um, you know, basically started doing custom PHP sites for them. Um, that involved evolved over the years into um, DNN or .NET Nuke websites okay. um, in the later thousands. Um, yeah, that goes back a little I bit. I remember those days. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, that evolved into becoming a, a Sitecore certified developer, um, working on Ektron, working across Acquia Drupal, spending a lot of time in the Adobe space. So kind of evolved over the years and and spent you know quite a bit of time as Ektron evolved into EpiServer into Optimizely and, and kind of followed that track um, over the years as well. So I've seen a lot of different technologies, a lot of different platforms, seeing the evolution of a lot of these into the the current DXPs that a lot of them um, are, are currently striving to be. Yeah, that's, that's a great segue too because we're here to talk about DXPs today and for any of our, our viewers out there, uh, I do want to just, I like to demystify acronyms and marketing and technology because we have so many. So Eric, can you can you explain to the audience what a DXP is? Yeah, for me, a, a DXP is a, a digital platform that enables, um, you know, businesses and, and um, you know, industries to really create digital experiences. So you know, we we always, you know, my my past is, you know, coming up from the CMS side. So, you know, pure content management, but that's evolved so much in needing, you know, all of the other tools to, to you know, really enable the marketer to create experiences for their customers and consumers. So, you know, personalization capabilities, analytics, um, optimization, experimentation, um, you know, being able to deliver um, multi-channel, you know, not only web, but in other experience as well. Um, to me, the DXP kind of allows the marketer to kind of pull that all into a single system, but also provides the flexibility to pick and choose different pieces. So you hear a lot about, you know, composable technology and extensibility between platforms and being able to, to you know, plug and play in a lot of cases. It's never that easy, but um, right. The intent is, you know, use the best that's out there for what you're trying to achieve. And, you know, a DXP really allows you to do both. Um, it allows you to either use, you know, all of the technology that's in that single platform or pick and choose based on what your company and what you're you're trying to achieve. Yeah, with, with the need to kind of, you know, have your marketing team empowered to be able to make decisions and make changes on the website based off of maybe experimentation they've done insights they've gathered they need the ability to do that pretty swiftly because you know i've been in situations where we might pick up an insight and we want to market against it on the web and we've got to work with our dev team and we know dev is usually the most uh requested team of all time right it's hard to kind of get in there probably development and then i would say legal are probably the top busiest uh portions of the business so you made a good point in terms of talking about how these tools and how they've evolved from just traditional CMSs to really experience platforms where you can track and manipulate the customer's journey from top to bottom. Matt, I think I saw you want to jump in for a sec. 
Yeah, um, it's just mentioning that, you know, the DXP is really all of that and then a set of tools that a developer can use to, you know, seamlessly integrate across kind of those core technology components, make, you know, easier deployments, um, good visibility into, you know, the systems and the infrastructure and, you know, make the, the platform level work for the developers as well. So it's, it's certainly, um, you know, the marketer is front and center in a DXP, but there's, you know, a set of core technologies that the development team can work with as well that makes a seamless experience. Awesome, awesome. And in, in thinking about a seamless experience, um, thinking about customers, clients who may be on older platforms today and they're looking for a DXP, maybe this would be their first DXP that they've actually onboarded onto their business. What are some key things that our clients or prospective clients want to watch out for when they're exploring what DXP to select? And I'll, I'll lay that up to either one of you guys. Matt, you want to start to take first swing at that? Yeah. Um, so I, I always start from a technology perspective. Um, and, you know, for me, a DXP kind of table stakes there are, can it scale to meet your business needs? You know, if, if you are, if you're busy on a certain day of the year, like Black Friday or during, you know, big games or whatever your, your business is in, your DXP needs to be able to handle that amount of, of traffic and scale nicely in a way that, um, your customers uh, and and your marketing team can rely on that platform to do its job at, at your busiest times of the year. Um, you really want a content authoring experience that's going to support your marketers. You know, getting the the personalization um, I think is key. You know, um, tailoring experiences that can build out. Um, you know, for for specific customer segments and and groups, um, in a way that maybe wouldn't be possible with just a you know CMS system. You want to be able to take all of that data and work with it to to build out those experiences and do it in a way that's visual, in a way that you know can uh, support the marketing team um, rather than making you know a, those calls to the development team to yeah. to build out those experiences. I think Matt kind of hits it on the head with, you know, the the big thing that I try to, to you know, talk through our clients with is, you know, it's really good to, to understand how you are going to market to your end user, but also think about your marketers day to day. You know, how easy is it them? How easy is it for them to actually manage, you know, those experiences, those, you know, marketing efforts, you know, the day to day of being in the platform and actually being able to create all of this has to be seamless, has to be easy to use. It has to be something that they want to go in and, and build those new experiences, build out those personalizations, go through, you know, experimentation and, and create tests. And, you know, it has to be a platform that really enables them to do that seamlessly. And when we think about a DXP, it, it not only needs to provide the end user capabilities and features, it needs to provide that seamless experience for the marketer and content author and admin um, to, to really go out and do that easily. You know, the more that they want to be in there, the more that they're going to be able to create. So doing that efficiently, effectively, and, and easily within the platform, that's a huge part that um, is often overlooked um, that I like to call out early on. You know, let's make sure that experience, you know, meets your exp exp expectations and is what you expect it to be. Yeah, that, that's a lot of great points you made there because I think about, you know, myself as a marketer having spent time on the client side, and wanting to be in the conversations for what technology we're going to onboard because my team's going to be responsible for using it. So that even brings up a, 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 a conversation about how organizations need to plan for how to vet technology vendors and partners so they can be able to extract all the information that they need so that they, they can use the features that are being sold during the sales process, knowing that, you know, just being honest, in many cases, 50% of what the vendors telling the client might go way over their head just because it's thinking so far in the future about different capabilities. So when we talk about specific vendors that are doing it right today and that are 
laying the foundation for a future that allows their customers to continue to create these great digital experiences. What would you say are, are some really good industry leaders right now that are doing it right in terms of DXPs? I mean, from my perspective, I think Optimizely, um, you know, checks a lot of those boxes. Um, it consistently, you know, hits the top of Optimize or of Gartner's and Forrester's, um, you know, various um, industry analysis. Um, it's a leader, you know, kind of across the board, not only in DXP, but, you know, in its core products like CMS and commerce as well. Um, and it it can um, you know it can really uh, support that marketing um, you know experience building that uh, you know I think is is crucial to um, to making really good experiences uh, today. Yeah, Here when you when you, when you think about the full DXP, one thing that we haven't talked about is is commerce, e-commerce, um, and being able to pull that all together, not many platforms are, are truly integrated and have those capabilities built in. So, you know, we talked about core content management, um, experimentation and, and testing, personalization, um, you know, being able to, you know, create um, hybrid mon monolithic um, headless experiences, you know, all in one platform, and then also tying that into, you know, very strong e-commerce capabilities Opti shines in a lot of those areas and, and is a front runner. And I think we see that with a lot of the, the industry reports and the, the analyst reports. I've seen it, you know, as you know, over the last few years, especially as we've done assessments and, you know, really kind of taken an agnostic approach to to meet the client where they're at and help them identify the right technology. Um, Opti's come to the table with a pretty strong position in a lot of those different areas, which makes them very appealing for quite a few, um, you know, organizations in different industries. Yeah, and yeah. I think anecdotally as well, we have, you know, I, I talk with my developers and I talk with clients that we deliver sites for and kind of both sides of that coin is, you know, I've seen what else is out there. I've worked with other platforms over the years and optimizely, you know, checks a lot of boxes that we, you know, in the developer's perspective might have had to build or might have just gone to market without before. And, um, you know, it's a, um, it, it really is kind of a, a full package that um, can deliver really strong performance. Um, you know, certainly not out of box, but, you know, we can support it easier um, than with other platforms. Yeah, and I think, you know, you use a, a great uh, key phrase, out of box. I think, you know, thinking about the experiences customers want today, it's probably going to be challenging for any company to take something right out of the box and make it something as a well worth experience for a customer that's going to continue to come back, that's going to turn into a fan, et cetera. So I think, uh, you know, out of the box may be challenging. Um, and, and knowing that Optimizely, has so much flexibility that gives an agency like ourselves or any other agency that a customer is working with the opportunity to adjust those experiences to make them just right and tailor fit them for that business. So when we're talking about customers and DXP and, you know, optimizing making these great strides to offer this all in one package, I think we've, we've seen some themes uh, over the last few years where there's some customers making some shifts from platforms that have traditionally been dominant in the space, uh, one of which has been Sitecore, where we're seeing and having a lot of conversations with customers where they're saying, hey, they're they're looking to migrate away from this platform. Can you gentlemen speak to some of the reasons why that might be? Um, one of the things that sticks out to me now, again, I'm, I'm approaching this from a, from a technology perspective. Um, but Optimizely has um, a culture of continuous improvement. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, we see with, with Optimizely is they have a, every, every couple of weeks, they're releasing, you know, the next minor version of their system. Uh, they went through the upgrade to, you know, the .NET Core-based technologies 
um, pretty much as soon as Microsoft, you know, was ready to release it. And that that culture of of um, innovation and kind of little wins that build up to a bigger, you know, stronger platform is just woven into Optimizely's DNA. Um, you know, they they're always releasing always making things um, just, you know, a slightly better. And then over time that builds up into something big. Whereas with, you know, other platforms, you might get into situations where you've got, you know, multi hundred hour upgrade paths every time the vendor releases a new, uh, you know, a new update to their system. With Optimizely, if you stay current, you know, those are the types of things that, um, typically don't happen. You don't get into that uh, that kind of a situation. Yeah, I think to Matt's point, I, I think Opti is following through with a lot of their promises, which is another good thing. So when you when you think about platform selection and comparison, it's it's really understanding the roadmap and and you know, is the roadmap that they are putting out there, are they going to hit that? Are they going to achieve that? Or is it just going to get washed away and you know swept under the rug and you know forgotten about? Um, yeah. We've seen Opti really come through in a lot of areas. So, you know, the the continuous updates and, you know, staying on the latest other platforms, you know, are trailing behind in that, you know, the optimized backend experience um, ability to create um, or have cloud environments that allow more than just headless. Um, headless has its space, but it's not not for everyone. Most of our clients are, are in more of a hybrid state where you know, they still want or need the core CMS page builder type capabilities, um, but also need the extensibility to create you know, headless interfaces and platforms for other channels that they're they're pushing out to. So you know, Opti's done a really good job of, of bringing that to life and staying true. And I think that's why we continue to see them um, you know, grow and, and build within, you know, industry reports and, and how they're positioned in the market is because of that. They are they are truly delivering on what they say they're going to do. Yeah, that, that's really important because you find in the sales process, a company's typically selling you, they'll sell you on what's going on now, but then it's almost like uh, those old school, um, uh, what uh, I'm thinking like Ron Cole and the infomercials where it's like, but wait, there's more, right? And maybe it's not an exact, price, yes. <laughs> right, right. So maybe it's not an exact comparison, but a lot of times companies are telling you we can do this now, and in five years we'll be able to do this later. Three and a half years, four years later, you're looking for announcements about how we're uh, trajecting towards those roadmap goals, and we're finding out, oh, we you were just kind of selling us stuff. So the fact that you I, guys mentioned culture and roadmapping. Was key. I'd, I'd love to see the late night infomercials before it be, you know, amongst the uh, top, you know, DXP contenders out there. Definitely, definitely. Because even if you think about a uh, a B two C company, and I, I try not to mention too many brands on the platform unless they uh, pony up for some uh, some advertising. But I say like Apple, Tesla, some of these companies, like Apple specifically. Steve Jobs sold us on innovation, right? And you get that from just the packaging. So you look forward to your new iPhone or your new Apple whatever purchase because you know they're going to do something a little different and they continue to deliver on that promise of being different. So I, I think that's awesome. And it's great when companies, especially in the more of the B2B space, can stay true to that because they're large investments. Uh, customers want to be reassured that they're communicating within their organizations why we're choosing a particular technology over another. So culture, you know, typically isn't something that's widely communicated as the reason. But in addition to all the technical things Opti's doing, I think that's a great point to bring that up, guys. So I know we're kind of coming up against time. I did want to ask you, gentlemen, uh, just in the spirit of being helpful for our current customers and prospective customers, what would you say are the top, I don't want to just, you know, pinpoint a specific number per se, but what would be the top things a uh, organization wants to look out for when considering migrating from an older platform and selecting a newer one? And I know that's such an open-ended question, right? There's so many things. Eric, do you want to take this one? I'll take first when I get this one. Um, as 
companies are, are looking, you know, a lot of a lot of you know companies are, are you know wondering should they they stay on their current platform? You know, is now the time to move? Um, you know, there's a lot of you know uh, cost considerations right now. Um, you know, how can we get more out of the platform? You know, roadmap of the platform is huge. We talked about that a little bit. You know, what is you know what does one, two, three years look like? You know, with the platform that you're considering, you know. Does it support your needs today? That's great, but does it support your needs for tomorrow? And do they have an extensible roadmap that's going to really hit that? So AI capabilities are huge right now. Um, we're still, in my you know opinion, in the infancy of that. But you know, do they have a strong belief in in continuing to iterate and and move forward with that? That's going to be a big part of it. Um, current capabilities, you know, are they able to to really hit on your business goals and requirements. So, you know, if if you're a company that's really looking for, you know, a lot of different platforms, a lot of different systems to come together and integrate and, and tie together, you know, that's one thing. If you're looking for a platform that provides everything in house and kind of easy to use, um, you know, single type of interface or very familiar interface, you know, that's another thing to to really look at there. Um, so, looking at roadmap, looking at core capabilities. You know, looking at how they approach the future and, and new technologies and AI, I think those are, are big factors to look at when you're looking at a, a replatform possibility. Yeah, and just to add on to that a little bit, um, I couldn't help but think about Optimizely One, Eric, as you were, uh, you know, kind of hitting on these key points. You know, Optimizely One really takes that DXP idea and takes it to the next level you know it's a set of um just core technologies as well as a kind of a language for thinking about how to generate content and how to move it through your internal processes and that's augmented by ai and you know by um some of these emerging technologies that allow for a a much more cohesive experience between all of the systems um, and but still allows room for, you know, if you've got other interrelated systems, you know, like in a commerce situation like an ERP or, you know, um, like some some other uh, product information management or or any of these, you know, other interrelated systems optimizely can, you know, can work within um, kind of its own platform and then bring in these external systems um, in, in a very cohesive way. Yeah, those are both great points. And then I'll chime in from the business side. Uh, I'll say, you know, business leaders, if you're considering a platform migration, a replatforming, you definitely want to have your roadmap for the next five to 10 years pretty ironclad. We all know markets will change, things will need to pivot. But you need to have a pretty solid 80 percent vision of where you're going to be in the future because that's going to help you determine what investment you make today uh, whether it be with optimizely or any other selection where you fully understand how the capabilities for that platform will sync with what you have planned whether your e-commerce business whether you know you're a traditional sales company that depends on a website that can nurture leads Make sure you have your ducks in a row so then you can you can get your mama duck, which would be the the, the technology. <laughs> it's a terrible analogy. <laughs> well, said. But I think you all get it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, gentlemen, I, I definitely appreciate the uh, time for you guys spending and, and joining the platform. Any last words? I, I appreciate you inviting us on uh, today. And, um, you know, I, I really look forward to how these you know DXP systems continue to evolve into the future. We're going to see a lot of evolution of these platforms over the upcoming years as they they migrate away from just a CMS capability and into a DXP and start incorporating more AI capabilities. I think that's going to I think we're going to see a drastic change over the the next few years. So let's let's approach this in a few months and uh, reapproach this in a few months and yeah you know, definitely have another definitely. take at this. Yeah, this was a great conversation. And for our audience out there, if you have any questions, concerns, if you're generally curious, feel free to message me or you can go straight to our wearaware.com website, have a conversation, and maybe we could help demystify uh, the world of DXP.